The Profit Constructors presents Construction Junction, the junction between accounting and construction. Please welcome our host, Tanya Schulte. Hi everyone, my name is Tanya Schulte and I am so excited to welcome you back for this next edition of the Construction Junction podcast. Before we dive in today, I'd like to tell you um, if you're at the SubExcel um, conference, which I'm pretty sure that when this podcast drops, we'll be smack dab in the middle of, I'm going to be there too. So we're headed to um, Nolens. And if you are there at SubExcel, when you're hearing this, please stop by and say hello. I can't wait to meet all of the listeners out there and get to chat with you. So looking forward to seeing everybody at SubExcel and catching up. It'll be a good time. And like I said, please do come and say hello and say that you're listening to the podcast. Always like to know who's out there listening and catching these great uh, podcast drops. With that said, let's dive into today's main subject, which is pre-construction. I think that pre-construction is, um, in a lot of ways, for a lot of companies, a great missed opportunity. And I'm going to dive in a little bit more on why I believe that. Today, we're going to be taking a look at it mostly from the standpoint of a general contractor. Um, we're going to talk with someone who's offering some solutions in that general contracting space. Um, and that's really where they're focusing their efforts, um, this particular solution. But I'm going to tell you, I think that every single uh, construction firm ought to be focused on this aspect of pre-construction, on this aspect of what do we need to do before anything happens and before our work starts out on the job site, we do need to have a process in place for that. And so we're going to talk about it again today. We're mostly going to be focused on that general contractor area. Um, but generals, subs, and everybody on the job site should be focused on and paying attention to this all too important. And unfortunately, all too often um, sort of missed opportunity of that pre-construction phase. Let's talk about what the pre-construction phase allows us to do, right? It allows us to properly assess the scope of the job. Okay. We want to make sure we know exactly what we're going out to do and how we want to do it. Um, it allows us to establish the proper budget so that we know exactly what we think this is going to cost. And that then obviously enables us to understand what we should charge um, for it. So we want to make sure we get that, those budgeting pieces in place. It allows us to know who our team's going to be. So again, from the general contracting side of things, as we're going to kind of be focusing on today, that means knowing who all of the subs are going to be that are going to be players, um, making sure that they're on board and that we've got scheduling lined out for them. We're going to talk about that in just a second. But like really getting a feel for who the team will be that's going to be participating in this project. Um, and then establishing those timelines, establishing lead times on material ordering, establishing timelines for the project and setting up our project plans. Um, and then any sort of like permitting and things that need to happen as well, right? So very, very important pieces that go into this pre-construction work. And some would argue it's really the most important part of any construction project. Imagine that I called you up, you and I are friends, and I picked up the phone and I called you up and I said, all right, let's go. <laughs> Your response was, great, where are we going? <laughs> That's kind of what it's like if we just skip this whole pre-construction phase. If I called you up tomorrow and said, all right, I'm going to be at your doorstep in 20 minutes, where are we headed? You wouldn't have any idea what I was talking about, most likely. And so the goal for pre-construction is that you and I sit down and say, hey, I'd really like to take a trip to Spain. Do you want to go with me? And you could say, I'd love to go with you to Spain. When were you thinking about doing that, Tanya? What dates should we go? How are we going to get there? What's it going to cost us? All of those things should be in a conversation between you and I before the day that I pick up the phone and go, okay, let's go. Now, obviously, that's a very strict interpretation of totally missing the boat when it comes to pre-construction. But sometimes some of those pieces can fall apart, right? I may call you up and say, hey, do you want to go to Spain? And you might say, yeah, that sounds great. When can we go? Um, you know, what time frame are we looking at? And I might, and you might say, hey, what's our budget? If I don't clearly define what budget means, does that mean like, what is the whole trip going to cost us? Or were you just thinking about what's the budget for plane tickets, right? So again, 
communication is so key when it comes to these pre-construction aspects. We have to all be on the same page. And if we don't know where we're going, if we don't know when we're going to leave, if we don't know when we're supposed to get there and we don't know what we're supposed to do when we get there and we have no idea what it's going to cost us, everything is going to go wrong about that trip from start to finish. You can guarantee it. And I see this all too often with um, smaller construction companies, especially that they don't yet have their pre-construction process dialed in and everything just falls apart across the board on the jobs because we didn't start with that good foundational piece. So pre-construction being a great foundation for everything that we need to uh, create a really good um, customer experience for owners, developers, and then at that sub-level for our GC clients, it's just so important for us to have really good processes in our back office and, and in our pre-construction phase that we know what we're doing. And by the time we step on the job site, everyone's going to look and point and say, hey, that's a crew I want to work with. Those guys know what they're doing because they thought about this from start to finish before we ever stepped foot on the job. And I'm going to work with those guys again. That's the goal. And that's what we're going to talk about in the next segment. I'm excited to introduce you to our guest. We'll be right back. If you would like to share your company or product on the Construction Junction, email hello at theprofitconstructors.com to become a sponsor. Welcome to the show. Really glad that you're here. Uh, you. Folks, joining me today is John from True Built, and we've chatted a couple times. Um, I'm super excited to like learn more about True Built and be able to kind of share the solution that you guys are bringing to the table for everyone that's listening. So, um, John, tell us a little bit about True Build, what it is and kind of why it was created. Yeah, so I'm John Sibley. I'm the CEO and founder of True Build. Um, we're a modern pre-construction platform. So we basically leverage the power of computer vision and AI to speed up the takeoff process, that process of quantifying materials, labor, equipment, et cetera, and then inputting that into an estimate all in one platform. Um, we also have a bid management module for our general contractor customers. Um, and they can send out bid requests to subs, subs can reply, and that can be integrated directly into the takeoff and estimation module. So it's one cloud-based way of doing everything for, for pre-construction. Awesome. Let's, let's dive into that a little bit more, because I think this is something that um, a lot of folks, especially when you're sort of starting out, sort of st starting to get your company up and running, it's my opinion. You can tell me if you think I'm wrong about this, but I think it's the pre-construction area where a lot of folks don't spend enough time. They don't spend as much time as they should when they're first starting out. And that can lead to a lot of issues. Would you agree? Yeah. So pre-construction is key to profitability. The better you understand the project and the, the earlier you understand that project, the more profitable it's going to be. You're going to eliminate the, uh, or reduce the need and risk of change orders or, um, you know, different things coming up once you actually do break ground. Um, so we, we really think pre-construction should be a competitive advantage. It should drive profitability and also firms that, you know, do get that track record of delivering a very, very accurate estimate to the owners and developers. They're going to win more business. The, the, the owner developer is going to say, all right, like I, I've worked with this firm before. I've heard of someone working with this firm before, and they delivered a very, very accurate estimate. And, you know, it might've been a two-year project and they were within 10%. Yeah. Um, of that initial estimate that's that's really important it's it's really hard to do and that's why you know modern software can uh accelerate that yeah modern software can accelerate that so tell us a bit more about how true built specifically accelerates that yeah so i'd say our biggest benefit right now is our uh, ai and computer vision takeoff platform um basically we can automate the manual task of tracing different lines in a blueprint um into just a few seconds we, we've trained our models on all sorts of use cases. So we have a model that can read a reflected ceiling plan, for example, and identify the different textures that are named for a legend. We have another model that can go through a door schedule. Um, we have a one click where it can do the linear takeoff for all the walls in a plan. Um, and kind of the, the question I always get in this is, you know, how do I know it's accurate? Um, and AI is a bit of a scary word right now for, for some people. Um, it's interesting for, for others. Um, but we really talk about AI internally here as augmented intelligence. Mm. And by that, I mean, our estimators and our pre-con managers who are using the true built platform today have sometimes decades of experience doing manual takeoff and doing estimation, 
uh, kind of quote unquote on the, in this old school way. So we need to create a platform that is, you know, has all this automation that's very, very robust but still allows the users to come in with their own experience, their own knowledge of this particular project, and then manually make adjustments as well. And that's really been our design philosophy the entire time is how do we have this you know, very robust, like automated platform that can also be manual and flexible when it makes sense. And then giving the user the, the power to choose, all right, I just wanna you know, fully automate this to get a quick quote, quick bid. Um, or I want to manually do it or some kind of combination, which is what we see the most often. I love that. So basically what you're saying too, is they don't have to just choose one or the other. It's not a toggle on or off. You can kind of really make it a hybrid of what you need it to be. Yeah. Every project is, is different. Um, you know, I think we have some customers that, you know, say they, um, the, the one I'm thinking of just built warehouses and the, the takeoff is pretty simple and, uh, pretty pretty similar every time. And so, um, you know, our, our computer vision models are, are learning from our customers as well as blueprints that, that we're feeding them. Um, and so they can, you know, really trust that automation. Mm-hmm. Someone who's creating something more complex, say an airport, we still need to have that, that manual takeoff layer too. So it's kind of balancing the automation and, uh, you know, the, the manual tools so someone can bring in that expertise that they have that's outside of the software world. Yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. When you're speaking about someone who is doing those similar types of projects over and over and over, and they are really leaning into trusting that automation, mm-hmm. I'd love to hear your take on, you know, how much time savings is that? Yeah, um, so we, we, we've run some tests with, we we actually have an estimator in-house at Truebuilt and we've run um, tests and uh, we, we think, it ranges between 150% to 200% reduction in, in time spent on takeoff. Um, but again, it's it's all, honestly less about saving time and more making sure that you get the most accurate estimate possible. Um, our software is very, very good at um, you know finding things that a, a human might miss in the blueprints as well. And uh, some of the annotations you can do and some of the call-outs that appear um, can make that that accurate. So it's it's reducing time, but it's also increasing the, the accuracy of the takeoff. I love both of those takes on that. I think there's uh, benefits to both, right? So, and and streamlining those things and giving added efficiency so the estimator can be spending their time really diving in on the accuracy of it rather than just spending their time drawing lines on the screen. Yep, exactly. And e- even a smaller example that's actually ended up being really powerful and from a technical perspective is actually pretty easy for, for us to build. Um, but when an estimator gets a plan set, let's say, you know, it's 2000 pages, they have to go through and, you know, either use software or, or manually go through and rename every single page for mm-hmm. something that makes sense to them or, um, you know, something that maybe the architect didn't uh, put on there. Some software out there can, you can like almost draw a box around the title of that page and then just hope the architect put it in the same place every single time. Right. Um, and so we thought that was the wrong approach. And so what we built instead is a model that can understand the entire context of the page and it can process about a thousand documents in five seconds. And we, we say it's about 99% accuracy um, in terms of the, the renaming. So that's saving our customers a, a ton of time as well. Um, one of our customers actually told us that prior to using Truebuilt, they wouldn't bid on jobs where the documents were, were such a mess and they had to waste a bunch of time like renaming pages and getting them in the right order and assigning them. Automating that process means they can bid on that job much, much faster. Wow, yeah. That's amazing because it just opens up a whole new world of possibility for that particular yeah. um, contractor. Um, okay, so we've talked a lot about that aspect of it, but there's it, Truebill doesn't just do that, right? There's other aspects of pre-con that you guys are diving into as well. Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, Truebill, I guess to back up a bit, uh, is only two years old, um, less than two years old. So we're, we're very, very early days still. And what we first launched with was just purely bid management. Yeah. Um, and we made the decision to do that because we knew it was going to take time to train these AI models and make sure they're really, really accurate. 
I didn't want to go to the market and say, here's this new AI thing and then have them try it. And they're like, oh, this only works 50% of the time. Like yeah. that, That's not useful. Um, bid management, you know, th there's a, a few legacy competitors that are out there. We're, we're doing a few things differently. Like our, our bid leveling is a bit more automated. We have layers of machine learning to really call out, you know, what bids make sense and uh, a recommendation engine to uh, clarify that as well. Um, and so bid management was our, our strong suit, like all, all of last year, um, while we continued to build out takeoff and estimation. The end to end, the end, -to -end vision for TreeBuilt um, has always been consistent though. So by that, I mean, every sales meeting that we have, we come in and ask the, the contractor to describe all the software that they're using for pre-construction. And some of these larger firms are using, you know, six to eight different platforms that don't talk to each other. They're not integrated. They have to stitch together, stitch it together in Excel and, and via email. Um, and so it's, it's really a mess. So we think, you know, having something that takes a subs response from the bid management platform, plugs that into the estimation platform, which comp is compared to what you yourself as, as a general contractor found on your takeoff module in TrueBuilt, um, is the right way to go. We're eliminating that patchwork approach to software and consolidating not only their, how much they're spending on software, but you know having all that data in, in one place. Yeah. So to break down a little bit of what you said, especially for folks that aren't necessarily familiar with all the steps here, I mean, if we go back very old school, I won't go too far back. Let's just say we're still in the email days, but the, a lot of that bid management used to just literally be funneling through email, right? Like, Hey guys, I'm sending this out for bid, send me back what you've got. And then all that just goes back and forth and back and forth with questions here and questions there. Um, and like you said, having to compare multiple bids, everything's just sort of funneling through emails. Um, th there's just a lot of room for error, <laughs> a lot of time wasted in all of that. Like how does what TrueBuilt does sort of narrow all that down and make well, it much more I'll, easy? I'll, I'll, first, I'll first give you one better. Our, our very first customer um, last year, actually, the main point of contact there was the very first customer as well for something called BidFax. And that was the, the, the innovative fax machine where you could <laughs> send and receive bids via, via fax. Yeah. Um, so e even email has been a step up is, right. is what I'll say. Yeah. Um, but yes, ha having one place um, where you can look at the different subcontractor responses by, by trade. Mm -hmm. and, and look, sometimes subs still email it in. Uh, what we've created there is a plugin that can automatically take the subs response via email and plug that into the software. But the behavior we're trying to encourage is for the subcontractors to respond via TrueBuild. Mm -hmm. um, and that just makes the system run a bit smoother the general contractor doesn't have to come in and uh, either manually add or use our plugin to, to add it uh, to the bid leveling. Yeah, absolutely. Um, let's talk about bid leveling. Again, for those kind of unfamiliar, what does that even mean? Let's dive in a little bit more on what what does a bid leveling process look like and how are we trying to determine which bids are best? And Yeah, so let's say I'm, I'm a GC and my job's going to require me to hire a concrete subcontractor I'm probably going to send out six or seven requests, six or seven different uh, concrete subcontractors. Uh, we have a full directory, uh, TrueBuilt directory, as well as a way to manage your own directory um, as a TrueBuilt customer. Um, and then from there, the subcontractors are going to take a look at the plans. They're going to receive all the documents, any call outs or, or notes you've left, you can put in there as well. You can literally put in different line items, general acknowledgments, Anything you want them to answer, you can create a form for that. Some, some companies, they, they want a very specific way for the subs to answer. Other companies are just like, here's the plans. Like, tell me what you think. Right. Um, and so what we see is, you know, when that happens, the, the subcontractors are able to get an email. The email comes directly from the general contractor. It doesn't come from like a true built alias. That's easy for the sub to, to ignore. Yeah. Um, and the subs are able to respond either via email like they have in the past, and then we can plug that into to bid leveling, um, or they can respond via TrueBuilt and just you know literally answer that form right there or just put in what that lump sum estimate is. Yeah. From there, in our bid leveling platform, you can compare all six or seven of those different subs. You can, the software will highlight, you know, uh, this guy was 
30% off on a certain line item, um, you know, let's give them a call and, and, and find out what, we're, what we're, went wrong there. Um, yeah. that could, that, we can compare that to, to our initial takeoff and estimate if the GC did that to, to start with. I love that. Um, so when we were talking about like you guys, so you go into every single sales meeting, you're kind of trying to understand what people are already using and, and aspects of multiple platforms, trying to feed into one, all of these things. What would you say is the number one hesitation that folks have around switching over to something like Truebill? Yeah. Um, I, I, honestly, what I hear most often when someone says no to using Truebill is this seems really cool. I should be thinking about this, but I've always done it this way. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we, we have a decent amount of legacy competitors that um, I always joke, you know, look like they were created in 1998. And that's because they were created in 1998. Yeah. Um, so I think it's an education um, obstacle that we have to overcome. You know, what, what are the benefits of being cloud-based? It's having multiple people in the software at one time. You don't have to internally email back and forth. You can leave comments. We have a pretty cool multiplayer feature where literally you can have, you know, two estimators on the plans at once. They can follow each other around. They can point stuff out to each other. You can bring in a project manager who might be on site if you want to show uh, the, the, the plans via tree built there too. Yeah. Um, and so really it's an education obstacle where we have to come in and say like, I, I get that you've done it this way for, for 20 years. Um, but, you know, with modern technology, we can speed up the, the process and, and make it more accurate as a whole. Um, and I think more and more people are becoming aware that you do need to have a cloud-based takeoff and estimation system mm -hmm. and that it, you should have an end-to-end -end system that encompasses everything for, for pre-construction. And so that's really what I focus on. You know, the, the stuff we talked about earlier, the computer vision and AI things. They're kind of like these cool, exciting um, new, new features that are coming out. But, you know, really it's about just becoming cloud-based and having everything in one place. Like, yeah, um, yeah sorry, go ahead. No, I was just say, so like, that's like the hesitation. Like we've always done it this way. And, and honestly, every single new solution that comes along in this space, it's not only that it's in the construction space and it's everybody's kind of more out in the field, right? Like they don't want to worry about some of these more office-based solutions as part of it. But the other side of it too, is that for any industry change, change management is hard. So introducing any new system is always going to be hard. And so I think that your, your hesitation makes so much sense. It's, it's a normal hesitation for any, any change that we'd want to do, but what are some of the aha moments that you're, folks who are on the platform have seen even some of those maybe that were like i don't know this is going to be hard like what are some of those aha moments that they're able to now see what, what, when the ai models like accurately you know let's say answer a reflected ceiling plan that would have taken an hour or two hours to to fully measure the area and do the linear takeoff uh when you can do that in you know 10 seconds that's that's when it clicks yeah um i think what I said before about, you know, being cloud-based, that's more of an explanation. That's not something you necessarily see actively. Yeah. You're just like, oh, like, who cares if I have software on my browser versus software uh, yeah. uh, on my computer? And that's where we have to explain, no, like, there, there are benefits on, you know, having everything backed up and saved on the cloud. There's benefits for the collaboration internally and externally with the different stakeholders. Um, and so I think that's more of an education, whereas the AI models, when they work perfectly, it's just like, oh my God, this is going to save me hours. Yeah. I love that. What do you think is like the number one reason that um, your general contractors really love using TrueBuild? Yeah. Ha having everything in one place. Um, so bid management, takeoff and estimation. I, I think some of the legacy competitors out there have stitch together an end-to-end -end platform, but they did it by acquiring businesses and then trying to integrate them. And in some cases, you know, some of the bigger players out there, you might be signing a contract with everything for takeoff, estimation, project management, uh, maybe a CRM as well. Um, but as is often the case with acquisitions, they haven't been well integrated. Usually the innovators at the company leave during the acquisition process or after the acquisition process. And so what ends up happening is you still get that patchwork approach that I referred to earlier, 
even though you're signing one contract with one company, they're not accurately stitched together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what are some of the impacts that you think that like using (laughs) Bidfax email um, and even some of these stitched together platforms, where are some of the impacts that you're seeing in construction companies that don't have a more integrated platform and way of doing this? What, what toll is it taking on those? I I mean, it's a cliche, but I think it's especially true in construction, like time, time is money. And uh, you know, it takes a long time to copy and paste, um, you know, subcontractors responses via email into an Excel document. Um, and that Excel document, by the way, isn't easily shared with other people on your team. And then you have to go do manually take off and then bring that into the Excel document. Um, and when I see how estimation has been done in Excel for a long time, and there's, you know, 30 different sheets on there, it's like, no, we, we can do this with modern software and modern architecture. So, um, yeah, I, I, I think, you know, given where modern technology is, it's a waste of time to do it the, the manual way. Um, that said, like I, like I said before, our approach has been, how do we balance the, the manual and, uh, automated parts of pre-construction? Yeah. Yeah. I think earlier you were sort of digging in on the accuracy side of it as well. Yeah. Time is money, but also how many times have both you and I seen that the lack of accuracy can really come back to bite someone on, especially some of these much larger jobs, right? So uh, speak to that a little bit, if you would, like the accuracy side of that and how TrueBuilt is solving for a lot of those issues. Yeah. So an easy example is, you know, our AI will automatically identify uh, the different versions of a plan. And that's mm-hmm. something that gets missed all the time by estimators. You know, they don't realize that they're looking at version four, um, which is now out of date. And so yeah. as you upload plans, our, our software will automatically flag that and, you know, put the version, you can compare those two different versions um, so it's all about, you know, flagging things that we think is off. Mm-hmm. Um, I also think the the part of having everything in one system, it's much easier to say, oh, I had, you know, I estimated $10,000 for concrete. All the subs came in on my bid management and bid leveling and true built at $20,000. What am I missing? Mm-hmm. And so it's not necessarily that the software itself is saying like, you messed up on this. It's saying, this doesn't seem right. Let's take a look at this together. And that's that augmented intelligence I was talking about before. Yeah. I love that. I love that you guys are calling it augmented intelligence rather than just artificial. Like there's it yep. let's let's have a piece in this as as humans. Yeah. Um, are there other softwares that TrueBuilt integrates with? Not 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 currently. We we get the request all the time um to integrate to uh, you know, the, the pro cores of the world. Um so that that's something that we're considering for the back half of this year. Mm-hmm. Um, right now our, our focus is just, you know, being the, the best takeoff and estimation platform possible. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. Um, how can folks find out more if they want to know more about like TrueBuilt and, and what you guys do? Yeah. Uh, TrueBuiltSoftware.com. Um, we have, also have a good presence on, on LinkedIn. Um, and then, yeah, my, my email is John at J-O-N at, at TrueBuiltSoftware.com and anyone can reach out to me at any time. I, I, I don't turn down any conversations in the construction world. I'm so happy to chat on anyone. If it's someone who wants a demo, great. If it's someone who just wants to learn more about AI, great. If it's someone who wants to tell me, you know, you guys are thinking of something the wrong way, like even better. Yeah, no, I, I love that. We all should be welcoming those challenges to our thinking. That's absolutely part of what it means to be a great business owner. John, great. Thank you so much for taking the time out to talk yep. to us about TrueBuilt today. I'm really looking forward to seeing where you guys are able to go from here. Awesome. Well, thanks for having me. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in to Construction Junction. To find out more about the junction between accounting and construction, please email hello at theprofitconstructors.com.